peer participants of the MOOC on the United Nations Global Study on Children to Wife of Liberty. A very warm welcome. I'm very grateful that you registered for this MOOC and I'm sure that you have many interesting hours learning about uh, what we are doing in this uh, major United Nations project. It started already uh, in 1996 when Grasse Magel was asked to write a global study on children in armed conflict. That was the time when we had many child soldiers uh, in Sierra Leone and other countries who committed most serious crimes, who were forcefully recruited. And it was a game changer because we saw children after that, not as perpetrators, but as victims. And uh, there was a major awareness raising campaign in the United Nations uh, to really tackle the problem of child soldiers and today the situation is much better around the world. In 2006, a second global study, this time on violence against children, was conducted by Paulo Sergio Pinheiro, a very well-known Brazilian human rights uh, professional. And uh, again it was a game changer because uh, children are victims of violence in so many areas. Already in the family they are beaten up by their parents, in schools by their teachers, in institutions uh, by the people who are running these institutions, in, uh, in prisons, in other detention facilities. Again, uh, it created awareness that children have a right not to be beaten up. All forms of violence, physical violence, psychological violence, sexual violence, verbal violence are actually prohibited and more and more states are prohibiting corporal punishment in schools, in the family and other forms of violence. So uh, really much has been done in the meantime to create the necessary awareness to change the practice. And uh, my global study is a product because deprivation of liberty is the reason for so much violence against children. So in 2014, the United Nations General Assembly requested the Secretary General of the United Nations to commission another global study, this time on children deprived of liberty. And I have the privilege uh, that I was appointed in 2016 to lead this global study. It's a joint effort of many actors and I am the one who are leading and coordinating it. Why have I been chosen? There might have been many other persons who are more qualified on children's rights than I am. But I spent six years as United Nations Special Rapporteur on Torture, carrying out official fact-finding missions to 18 countries in all regions of the world. And in order to investigate torture, I had to have unannounced access to all places of detention and I had the right to conduct private interviews, confidential interviews, uh, with detainees, witnesses, perpetrators, etc. And I can tell you, I saw thousands of persons in prisons, in psychiatric hospitals, in migration detention centers, in institutions, in orphanages, etc., where they were deprived of liberty. And it's always terrible because many of those people uh, are ill-treated, the conditions of detention are terrible. But it's most heartbreaking if you see children. In Togo, for instance, I saw children as young as seven and eight years who have already been convicted of minor crimes, they've been stealing something, and they were sitting in a real prison. It was terrible. How can you hold those small children accountable? Only because the minimum age of criminal responsibility is seven years of age. In Kazakhstan, I went to an orphanage, or a, ch a children's home, they call it. The youngest was a three-year-old child who was an orphan, shaved in prison clothes. The oldest were 16 years old. They have committed some kind of little crimes. Uh, and were spending in the same institution. Others uh, were 
children living in the streets who were running away from school and then they were picked up by the police and brought into the same place. The children were terrified. They could not leave this place. They were beaten up every day for the yeah. most minor infractions of some kind of disciplinary rules. It was very difficult for me. I would wanted to take them with me and say, no, we have to get out here. But I, I didn't have the power to actually release those children. So that is uh, the, the main reason why probably I have been chosen, but also why I am so much committed to the global study on children deprived of liberty. And the aim of the global study is, first of all, to find out how many kids are actually behind bars in the world. We simply don't know, we don't have the data. And on the basis of the data, then also to see what has been done in order to reduce the deprivation of liberty. There are many good practices, for instance, in the uh, post-communist states in Central and Eastern Europe, in, in Central Asia, uh, where there were huge institutions for children and now they are in a deinstitutionalization process. In Bulgaria, for instance, they reduced these kind of institutions and the children in there by almost 90%. So there are many also good practices that I would like to, to take up.